to everyone. First of all, to, to thank the, the, the organization to having us here. It's the third time we participate in Value Spain, and it's really a pleasure to, to be here. Starting to, to introduce them, our company, uh, my name is Diogo Pimentel. I work for Magallanes Value Investors. We are uh, uh, value-oriented independent um, asset managers. We just manage um, equity funds. We're currently managing three, three funds, one Iberian equity fund, one European fund, and we're launching a, a microcaps fund. We, we share the, the, the same view of Philip Best, uh, and, and we, we found a lot of value in the, in the microcaps universe. We were founded two years, a little more than two years ago, and we're currently managing 1.2 billion of assets under management, and we have a, a long track record of all the, the investment team managing the European and the uh, Iberian equities. Uh, I'll leave you here with a, a brief, um, uh, a brief uh, presentation of uh, our fund's performance. The Iberian uh, uh, fund, it's up 28% since its inception at the start of 2015, and this compares with a 2% uh, fall for, for its benchmark. And regarding the European fund, the fund is up 24.6%, uh, which compares with a, a benchmark performance of 7% in the, in the same period. All, all, all the returns are uh, net of, of fees. Moving now to our in investment idea. The investment idea we bring here today, it's, in, it's Sonai. So now, some of you Iberian investors, of course, know it. It's out of Iberia. Iberia is not very known. So now, it's a family holding company founded in 59 and, and is managed by the Esvedo family for the last 30 years. The Esvedo family owns 52% of Sonai through FNR, then you have BPI with 9%. From the Sombrero, two and a half, and you have 36% of uh, free float. In, in a glance, Sonai has a 1.8 billion uh, market cap. It has a net debt of 1.2 billion, and is currently uh, trading uh, at uh, 6.4 um, EV EBITDA. Uh, 2016, this is the reported figures that we, we find. It's, it's very uh, appealing, and we will try to convince you in the next slides. So, starting with the, the track record of, of Sonai uh, and the, the Azevedo family managing uh, Sonai. In the last 28 years, book value uh, in, in Sonai has grown 10% a year before uh, dividends. In the last 10 years, uh, uh, in a, a very adverse macro environment uh, for Portugal, uh, Sonai was able to, to increase its book value by 37%, which compares with an 8% increase of the Portuguese GDP in the same period. Uh, in terms of company description, uh, Sonai uh, uh, operates uh, four different areas. In terms of, of the pro forma EBITDA, 66% is the retail businesses. They operate Sonai MC, is the, the, the brand for the food retail business. Sonai RP, it's the specialized retail, and Sonai uh, uh, SER, it's the retail properties in business. Then we have a telecom business that um, represents 22% of the pro forma and EBITDA, which uh, Sonai holds through Sonaicom, where, where they have a 88% uh, stake. Then we have a commercial real estate, Sonai Sierra. It's a 50-50 joint venture with Grovner Group. And then they have a small business investment manager that represents 3% of the investment, uh, investment uh, of the pro forma EBITDA. So, Passing to the, the rationale of our investment case in, in Sonai. We have a 40%, more than 40% fall since the 2015 peak, and we have a, a, the, the stock trading at what we find a very attractive uh, valuation, a 45% discount to, to NIV. 
why, what explains this, this performance uh, of Sonai in, in, the, in the last uh, um, uh, two years? We, we, we think there's four, four issues that can explain Sonai's performance. First is the, the price war that, that began on the Portuguese retail sector on the start of 2015. Then we have the Portuguese sovereign risk. In November 15, we had market was very worried of the new elected government. It's a, a socialist government that is, is, is governing with the support of extreme left parties. So market was logically worried about that. Then in the summer of 2016, we had Brexit, and, and we have the rumors that uh, the rating agency, the, the BRS, could downgrade the, the Portuguese uh, sovereign risk. It's the only rating agency that maintains Portugal investment grade, so market um, um, was scared. Other factor, it's Sonai is completely overlooked and misunderstood, and it, it's just uh, the, the only coverage, it's local uh, coverage, and is not present in the major uh, European indexes. And then he has a, a very complex uh, holding structure for a, a, small com a, a small cap company, as we'll see in, in, in the next slides. In, at the end of 2016, uh, uh, Sonai's uh, stock started to, to recover. We had some, some uh, positive signs in terms of, uh, of the competitive environment in the, in the Portuguese uh, uh, sector starting to, to ease. And then uh, Sonai is starting to solve some of these uh, uh, problems. And they announced a, a JV with uh, JD Sports. And then we'll, we'll see everything in detail in the next slides. It started to recover, but we think I think the, the stock has the potential to continue to, to re-rate and, and to be a very interesting investment case. So uh, uh, starting with uh, the complex structure, this is a, a, a pro forma structure uh, as the company reports it. Retail, as we saw, accounts for 60%, 66% of the, the, the pro forma EBITDA. It's fully consolidated. Then we have telecoms with accounts which accounts for 22% of the, the, the pro forma EBITDA, but is equity consolidated. Then we have commercial real estate, 9%, but it's also equity consolidated. And then we have the investments, this 3%, and with, with a range of participations from 16% to 89% and 100%. Some are consolidated, some are uh, fully consolidated, some are equity consolidated. So. It's a bit of, of a mess, and a lot of investors don't uh, have the time to, to try to dig and to understand um, uh, uh, this, 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 this holding, holding company. So we'll, we'll try to, to save some time for you guys and try to explain everything. So, starting with, with the Sonai MC. Sonai MC is the food retail business. It's the, the, most, um, the most relevant and important business um, um, of Sonai. You can see here um, the market shares in the Portuguese uh, in the Portuguese food retail market. You can see uh, Sonai MC is the leader with 27% market share, followed by Geronimo Martins 24%, uh, and then you have uh, four other players with with uh, much less significant um, uh, market shares. As you can see, it's a very concentrated market share. You have two two players who have more than 50% market share, and the top six players have roughly 80% market share. Sonai operates 477 stores in, in Portugal, and they are present in all the, the, the formats. They are uh, in the hypermarkets, they are in the medium range hypermarkets, and they are in the proximity uh, uh, formats. The, the number two player, Geronimo Martins, has uh, 413 uh, stars at the end of, uh, of 16, and then we have other players with in, insignificant market shares. Uh, in online, it's, it's important aspect uh, in terms of this, this sector. Online 
wine, it's, 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 it's residual in, in, in Portuguese, uh, as Cantar defines it, it's an early adopter uh, stage when it only represents 1% of the sales of Sonai, but Sonai has more than 70, 70% market share of the uh, online food retailer in Portugal. Geronimo Martins, the second player, is not present in, in this market, so Sonai is the absolute uh, Leader. So, what happening in the in the Portuguese food retail market? As you can see, uh, even though we had a very difficult macro environment, from 2008 to 2016, uh, Sonai was able to con to grow organically its, its its sales. Every year, its sales went up. The only exception, 2012, the most difficult period for for Portugal with with a with an intervention from from the IMF. And in 2008, from 2008 to 2007 to 2008, we have a big jumped. This is when uh, Sonai bought the Car Carrefour operations in, in Portugal. It's the only inorganic operation they've done in food retail business. Everything you see here, it's, it's uh, organic business. So it's, it's growing from less than 3 billion in 2008 to 3.7 billion at the end of 2006. And I repeat, in a very, very adverse um, uh, macro environment in Portugal. So we divide this, 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 this period in, in three segments. In the, the normal uh, profitability between 2017 and 2009, where Sonai enjoyed 6.2% uh, EBITDA margins in the food retail um, business. And then we have a, a high profitability period between 2010 and 2013. Between this, this period, Sonai enjoyed a huge expansion in, in, in the margins, coming from 6% to a, 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 a maximum of 7.5% at the end of 2013. What, what this led, this, this uh, big uh, abnormal profitability for the food retail sector, this led to competitors starting to, to enter and starting to, to gain market share, namely Geronimo Martins. In, uh, as you can see in the right chart, in the dark blue, this, they, they took the opportunity to gain a lot of market share from 2009 until 2015. They were, they were, uh, Geronimo Martins was the, was the player gaining more market share, so now I continue to gain more market share from 20. 3% to 27% nowadays, and all the other players were suffering a lot. In a strong contrast with other European markets, we have new entrants. We had new entrants in the Portuguese market. We had Lidl, we had Haldi, that's the, 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 the players that they are spreading terror in the UK retailers. But in Portugal, these, these players suffered a lot. They are present in Portugal for more than 20 years. Aldi continues to be present but has abandoned its expansion, it's completely residual. And then we have Lidl, is losing a lot of market share, is the number four. For a player with an 8% market share because they can't compete against the Geronimo and, and, and Sonai. So what happened here, it's in 2015, Sonai saw its market leadership in the food retail, Portuguese food retail market was at risk, so they said enough is enough, we start to, we, we, we won't behave responsibly anymore, and so we start, we'll start to invest aggressively in, in prices, we want to remain the, the, the number one player in, in the market. So as you can see, between 2014 to 2016, the market has returned to the this normal level of, of profitability for, for Sonai that is ending the year with 6.7 uh, uh, EBITDA margin on the food business. Now we had a, a, a strong message in the last conference call of Sonai when they, they passed the message. They, they, they are seeing the competitive environment is, is slowing down in Portugal. Geronimo, Mar Mar Geronimo Martins has said the same message, and Sonai, well, that is a very conservative company, they don't give any guidance. They said for 2017 they expect profitability to be maintained. So 
things are, 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 are stabilizing and the fears that the market had that the, the beta margin was continuing to come down have fade out and, and, and that drive part of the re-rating in the last, uh, the last weeks. Well, what happened in, in, in Portugal? As we can see, this is, uh, the, and, um, this, is this data is from, the, from DECO, it's the P Portuguese Consumer Association, where you, you can see that between 2011 and 2015, Sonai was never the, the, the cheapest player in the Portuguese market. You have here both brands, Continent is the hypermarket brand, and Continent Modelo is the supermarket and proximity format brand. They were never the, the, the the market leader in terms of prices, so they had um, they gave oxygen to the to the competitors to start investing in prices and to start to dispute this this position that Sonai had. But then in 2015 they said let's start investing in prices and we are going to be the low cost operator in the the Portuguese market. And as you can see, since May 2016 they are the lowest cost operator in, in, in Portugal and in the pre and, and here we have the two baskets uh, uh, white label basket the the white label sorry this mix is the white label and premium basket continent and continent are the cheapest ones and the uh, premium basket uh, on the right side uh, continent and uh, model continent continue to be the cheapest brands in in the in the in the Portuguese market, so no room to to to, to invest and to gain market share to Sonai in terms of pricing. So, uh, passing on to to Sonai specialized in retail, this is an, another sor an, another source of concerns to the market. Sonai specialized retail is the division that uh, operates the electronics, the sports goods, and the fashion uh, departments. They have the brands they have, it's Vorten, they have uh, uh, Sportzone, they have Lozen and Salsa, this is uh, two brands that they recently uh, acquired, Modalfa and, and, and Zippy for, for, for their uh, long-term uh, Sonai brands. And this is, uh, on the right side, we have the, the peers. This is not the, the peers we, we, we value in uh, Sonai Specialized Retail. We're not valuing the fashion, the fashion business at Inditex multiples, don't worry. This is when we talk with the, with the company, we ask them what, what company they aspire to be in each of these, these departments. And they, these are companies, the companies that, that Sonai sees as the reference, Media Mark, Decathlon, and, and Inditex. So what's the, the problem here in, in, this, in, in, this, in, the, in the specialized retail? It's profitability. They, they, these operations are um, uh, electronic and sporting goods, fashion. It's a small operation. It's not uh, relevant. You have ZP that is present in 19 countries to franchise agreements, and Salsa they bought it uh, in the second quarter of 2016. It's present in 65 countries, but this is residual. They re they've bought it and they're starting to to restructure these operations. What the market is focusing it's uh, in Vorten and in Sportson. There are Iberian operations. Vorten is a very profitable operation in Portugal, but then it's present in, in Spain and it loses uh, uh, market. It loses a lot of m uh, money because it's it's uh, don't have scale to compete in the Spanish market. They have less than two percent market share, which compares with 35 percent market share in Portugal. And then we, we have uh, the sports zone that they have 30 percent market share in in Portugal. But even though they have this market share they have a sourcing problem and they can't uh, uh, generate a, any EBITDA. And then we have a 2% market share of sports zone in, in Spain that they lose um, a lot of money. So in, in, in overall, the, this, this operation uh, generates, here in the bottom chart, we can see this operation generates 1.4 billion of sales, but has negative EBITDA margins in the last years. In 2015, the EBITDA margin was practically break even and 2.4% in, in, in 2016, with generating just 35% EBITDA uh, and uh, being highly dilutive in terms of EPS because the EBIT is break even and the EPS contribution is negative. So market is very worried about this, this 
this, uh, the profitability of this boat, uh, these operations. But now things are starting to change. Three weeks ago, Sonai announced an agreement with JD Sports, and they are merging their Iberian operations with JD Sports. They will create the number two retailer in, in Spain with a uh, close to 8% market share against 30% market share of um, Decathlon. And this, this will uh, allow Sportsman to become a profitable company. Uh, this, according to the guidance Sonai gave, the, the new company will have a 40, 40, uh, 450 million uh, sales with a 10% EBITDA margin in 2018. So, and, and Sonai will have 30% of this of, of this operation. So, in the back of the envelope, we have we have a 45% EBITDA for the operation and a 30% margin for for Sonai from this. This was generating zero EBITDA in 2018. Will start to generate roughly 14 to 15 million EBITDA margin EBITDA, sorry, and continue to to grow. And we believe that something something similar will happen in the Vorten after this deal. The CEO of the company, Paulo Azevedo, um, uh, announced they are trying to do the same with Vorten. Vorten in, 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 is, the, is uh, we think it's even easier to do this operation because in Vorten, Portugal is a hidden jewel. It has more than 8% in EBITDA margin. They are the market leaders in, in, in physical retail. They have more than 40% of uh, online uh, electronics retail in, 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 in Portugal. So it's a very profitable operation, and then they have the uh, Spain that they have a, a, a high single-digit negative EBITDA margin that is diluting returns, and the company is actively trying to do so. And we th we think it would be more easy to do and to to increase a lot the, the profitability of so nice specialized retails. And we are going to pass the next years of uh, a negative contribution to EPS to a positive contribution to to EPS. Yes, which will help the re-rating of Sonai. Then we have, just to, to end the, the retail business, we have the retail properties. Retail properties, it's the, the unit that, that uh, has the, the real estate associated to the, to, the, um, to the retail business. As you can see in the right, uh, right chart, it has the continent, the hypermarkets, and the proximity format stores, and it has the, the logistics and office, and it has a, a net book value of 931 million. We are very conservative investors, so we value this at, um, uh, uh, and at the net book value, the reported book value by Sonai, but we think this is conservative and we're going to, to, to try to, to prove it. Just to, to, to try to understand in terms of the uh, retail businesses, Sonai has a 50% freehold um, uh, of the, its stores. It compares very favorably with a 40% average for the full retail um, uh, in the European operators, and and the, is, Sonai has been reducing this a lot to 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 free the, the capital that is allocated in real estate and increase the return on invested capital in the specialized retail. The the, the freehold is just 21%. We, we told you that, that we thought that the Sonai Retail Properties book value, it's a very conservative valuation, and that this is the reason why we think. Two reasons. First of all, that all the, the track record that the company has done when with announcing the relevant sale and leaseback operations, with all these operations are done with the infrastructure and real estate funds, and all these operations are done with a huge premium to the report, to the book value that Sonai values these buildings. You can see since 2010, the average premium it's 45 percent. Uh, to the, the book value. The other reason is what's the implicit yield in terms of the book value. As you can see, um, the implicit yield is 9.9%. So 
these Sonai retail properties receives rents of 92 million euros um, a year and has a reported book value of 931 million. So the reported uh, uh, book value yield is 9.9%. And if you see the implicit yields on all the, 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 the sale and lease backed operations that were announced, it was 6.8% in 2010, 2011, a very difficult uh, period for the Portuguese economy, I remind you, and 5.9% for 2014 and 15. In 2016, the company no longer disclosed these this, this ills to gain bargain power with the potential buyers of these assets. Then, entering in the commercial real estate uh, area. This is, is the JV that Sonai has with Grovner uh, Group, and um, it has it's a, an international shopping center specialist. They operate 45 uh, shopping centers. They own these assets. These assets are in Portugal, 52%, Brazil, Spain, Germany, Italy, and, and Romania. And besides um, uh, owning these 45 shopping centers, they have 10 projects under management uh, under development. They're building 10 different um, shopping centers. And they, they have uh, an additional 18 shopping centers contracts where they manage, uh, they, they do the, 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 all the, the daily management of these contracts and they, they, they charge a fee. It's an asset light business model that we are not valuing this, this part of the business. We just value it at the reported NAV, the, the last reported NAV of Cush, Cushman and Wakefield at the end of 2016 was 1.4 billion, and that's the, the value we use in, in our valuation, and is pretty much in line with Clapier, Unibail, and Euro Commercial. That we think it's the, the, the peers that, that compare to Sonai Sierra. And in, in terms of balance sheet, the, the balance sheet of the company is very conservative. They have a 28% loan to value, which compares with the 40% they had at the end of 2015. Then we go to the, to the telecom business. This is one of the complex structures inside of, of, of Sonai. The Sonai holds, as you can see in the left chart, Sonai holds 89.9% of Sonaicom. Sonaicom is also listed in the Portuguese stock exchange market. Sonaicom, the main asset it holds, is 50% on the joint venture of Zopt. Zopt is a joint venture with Isabel dos Santos that controls 52.5, 52.1% sorry, percent of NOS. NOS is a listed company, is listed on the Portuguese exchange, stock exchange market, and is the biggest cable operator in, in Portugal, is the number one, number two operator in the telecom market, is the number one operator in convergent offers in Portugal, and it's a company that's, that's benefiting a lot from the recent scandal on, on Portugal Telecom that everyone uh, knows. In, in, in the last years, its market share since 2014 has increased from 25 to 30%, and we believe that they, they, they will continue to, to gain uh, additional market share until uh, the 35% is completely possible to achieve 35% 35% market share in, in, the next, in the next years. Here's our, our valuation for, for Sonicom and for NOS. NOS we value it at 7.7 .7, uh, euros per share. The stock is currently trading at 5, five euros uh, per share. The, uh, it's currently trading at uh, l uh, less than six times EV EBITDA, which compares with, uh, with nine times for, for the cable, uh, European cable operating operators, a, a huge di discount just justified by the, the sovereign risk of, of Portugal because NOS is one of the best companies in, in the telecom market. And NOS has, has passed a, a, a huge capex upgrade in, in the last year. They were upgrading their network. They tried to gain market share. They were trying to, to, to gather this market share from Portugal Telecom, benefiting from their port problems. They, lot of, uh, they won a lot of clients in, in, in the business the, the department 
department where they were they were not present, and then they they've they've reached a, 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 a strong capex program that reached the end in 2016, and the next years will start to to, to come down, and all this free cash flow generation in is is going to be used to to pay dividends and to increase the dividends because NOS is has a very conservative balance sheet. They have less than two times net debt to, to, to EBITDA, which with compares with um, uh, more or less four for the, for the cable op operators. So we believe that the, the dividends from, from NOS are going to double from more than double from 20 cents in 2016 to 45% in 2020, 9% dividend yield, and this, this is this, this dividend, it's more or less, it's the, the consensus estimate for 2020 that would give you a 9% dividend yield at, at current prices. So we reach a price target for Sonicom of four euros per share. It's a, 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 an NAV discount of 37%, and we use this, 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 this valuation in our, in our model of Sonai. Here it's the, the investment and, uh, management and financials. This is just 3% of, of the beta. It's just to see um, the, 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 this are, 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 are ju is just a portfolio of tech, tech companies that, that can, can be used in the future, that Sonai thinks in the future it can be used for its retail and telecom business. It's, Everything is start startup. We value all these companies at book value, or we apply the conservative multiple for the, the ones that are they are consolidated. But it is not relevant as, as we can see in Sonai's uh, some of the parts. So, coming to to the interesting parts, the our some of the parts of um, of Sonai. So. The, Sonai Food Retail. We value Sonai Food Retail and at an EV valuation of 1.57 billion. We apply a 7.3 times EV EBITDA 2017. This is completely in line with, um, with um, the European food retails multiples. We think the, the Sonai deserves to, to trade completely with the same multiple with the, the European uh, peers. We don't see any reason to, to have the huge discount that is trading. Then the specialized retail, we, we value uh, Vorten at 3.1 times EV EBITDA, it's a 50%, 50% discount to the European uh, peers, uh, FNAC and Dixons. Then we, we, we value the GD uh, joint venture, uh, the sports joint venture with, with JD at the six point times EV uh, EBITDA multiple. This is the multiple of sports direct. We're not even using the J, JD sports because JD sports is trading at the 12 times EV EBITDA multiple. And then we have the fashion business. We value it at 136 million. This is the price that the company paid in 2015 in 2016 for Salsa and for Lausanne. For Zippy and uh, Modalfa, we are valuing it at zero. For the Sonai retail properties, we valued at the reported year-end 16 book value, 931 million. And Sonai Sierra, we've, we, 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 we valued a 50% stake at the reported NAV at the year-end 16, 709 million. Sonicom at the valuation, we've, our valuation, we've just uh, saw 1.1 billion. And the, the, the portfolio of startups at 39 million, its book value as we can see, irrelevant in the Sonai context. That would we, 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 we give us, then we, we, we discount this, this, the holding debt, uh, 600 million more or less, and we, we get to a, a equity NIV of 3.4 uh, billion, which gives us a, a price for share, um, a, price, a price target of 1.7 euros per share. We, it's an upside of almost 90% uh, at current prices. It's an NAV discount of 47%. Now let's let's put let's put it the other way around. Let's look at Sonai uh, uh, current uh, uh, current valuation market market price, and let's discuss what's the implicit valuation of the Sonai retail business. It's not just the food retail; it's the food retail, specialized retail, and then the the retail real estate. 
So we take the Sonai market cap, 1.8 billion. We deduct the Sierra value, 709 million. The Sonai com valuation, 1.81 billion. And the Sonai investment management, 39 million. So we get to the implied equity value, a negative implied equity value for the Sonai retail. We think this, this could be too much. But then, if we, sum, if we add the retail net debt, it's 692 million euros, we get to an implied Sonai enterprise valuation of 610 EV. So the implied retail EV to EBITDA multiple, it's 1.9 times. This compares with 7.3 times uh, for the European food retail sector. As we can see, we, uh, we saw, uh, we think this is too much and there's nothing that could justify this huge uh, discount that the food retail business is currently trading. So coming, coming to, the, to the risks. <laughs> What are the risks we identify in, in, in Sonai? It, Portugal. Portugal is the, the, the main risk, uh, main individual risk we see for the Sonai investment case because it's the one risk we identify and we, we don't see. It, the, it's the only one that the management can, can't tackle alone. And all the others, we, we believe they could do it. Uh, but in terms of Portugal, uh, things market is very pessimistic with, with Portugal. Now things are, are starting to move in, in, from a very negative pessimism when we had this new government elected. But the reality in, in, the, in Portugal is that the current mechanism we have in the European economy and the, the Central European Bank, it, this, this um, forces the, the governments to don't, don't have a lot of room to, to, to do different, uh, different things from what, what uh, the European uh, uh, Union and the ECB is, is demanding them to do it. And we, we saw this last year in, in Portugal. We had a socialist uh, government with the support of the extreme left uh, parties, communist parties, and this government was able to, to reach a 2.1% deficit to GDP, much less than, than Spain, and this the, the, the lowest deficit on the Portuguese economy for the last 40 years, 4-0. The, the GDP is recovering. In, in, the, in the fourth quarter of 2016, Portugal was the second uh, economy in, in the Eurozone that uh, was the fastest grower after uh, Spain. Uh, it achieved a, a GDP growth of 1.2%. Two days ago, the Bank of Portugal revised its estimates on Portugal, expecting a GDP of 1.8% for 2017 and 16, 1.6% for 2019. So I think with, with, if the government con continues to delivering all, all these restructuring uh, measures, I think p people will, will try to, to understand that the, the country risk um, in, in Portugal is not as big as, as the markets currently think, and this will drive a re-rating on the Portuguese, uh, equity, in Portuguese equity assets, and especially these ones that have huge leverage to, to, to the Portuguese economy. Then the, 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 risk, the, the second risk we see, the slowdown in private con and discretionary consumption is linked to the Portuguese country risk. Then we have Mercadona entering in Portugal. Mercadona, a strong retailer, has, has said that they, they plan to enter in Portugal in 2019, two years, in two years. They, went, they plan to open four stores in the north of Portugal, in, in Oporto region. It's a, it's, a, it's a risk, it's a very strong competitor, but as we saw in the past, we have we, we had Aldi and Lidl entering the, in the market and they weren't able to do anything, they weren't able to damage Sonai or Geronimo Martins, they, they lost market share, Sonai continued to gain market share, they have a strong competitive um, position, they have a big moat, they have already almost 500 stores in Portugal, they continue to expand their footprint, they're opening 50 stores in the next two years, so they are closing the, the gap and the premium locations to Mercadona 
to enter in the, in the market, and in terms of, of margins, um, Sonai has a 5.7% EBITDA margin in 2016, and this compares with a 5.5% EBITDA margin of Mercadona here in Spain. So there's no room to, to Mercadona to enter and, 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 and to, be, to do a, a big damage uh, to, the, to the Portuguese uh, food retail market. They will win market share, but they, they will win market share to these, these small players that are suffering a, a lot, and some of them can, could be willing to sell their, their positions. Other, another threat, online retailing, as, uh, as we, we saw, Sonai is the, already the biggest player, the, maybe Amazon could enter the, the, the market, of course, they, they won't, won't be able to maintain a 70% market share, but they'll, they'll have a very, very strong position, they have a very strong brand in Portugal. The other risk we identify, it's the misallocation of, of capital, maybe they, they, they do something stupid and buy something, something, something big. Uh, the overpriced valuation. In the past, they they haven't done it. Remember, the fami the family has uh, more than 50% of the company. It's their equity. They're they're playing, and in the last years, they they spent like 200 million doing small acquisitions on the fashion business. And the last year, at the end of last year, they they bought an organic food uh, uh, food chain in Portugal. Just a, a, a small acquisition, and the the last the last risk we see, it's not being able to restructure the electronics operation. We we see a reduced risk here because they have a very profitable operation in in Portugal, and the problem is Spain. And in, 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 at the end of, of the day, if they want, they can sell, they, they can close down the, the Vorten Spain operation. It would cost between 20 to 30 million euros, 2030. So it's not, it's not huge for, for Sonai, and this will, will increase a lot the profitability of, of, of the Vorten brand. So to, to wrap it up, uh, it's a family owned and well managed company. It's overlooked and misunderstood by the market, a very complex holding uh, structure. Uh, we have the, all the ne negative, uh, negative risks uh, and the ne negative perception of risk from the Portuguese um, uh, economy, but we have a, a, a strong, a strong player, a strong brand with the market leadership in all the segments it's present. In, in Portugal, we, we see that each one of the businesses is worth much more separately than, than together, and the management of Sonai knows that. And that, that's one of the triggers we, we think that if the market doesn't, doesn't un unlock this value on Sonai, the management could try to unlock this value, and this could be an, uh, doing, then announcing a, a, a buyback plan. They have no treasury shares. They could buy 10% of the company easily, or they could try to list the Sonai MC, the food retail business. As we can see, it's the most undervalued business uh, part of, of the Sonai business. So it's an extremely cheap valuation, and we see the, the potential to to double. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take your questions. Any question? Any question? None? Wow. Okay. A question for Leo? No, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, <clears throat> so thanks for helping us uh, to analyze this business. Uh, just a question regarding sort of the retail business. Um, uh, there are two big, strong big players uh, and, and weaker players. How do you see in the long run the potential recomposition of uh, the competition in Portugal? Uh, either, you know, could some of those smaller players merge together or, you know, uh, could they, is there only option to, to shut down at some point? Uh, Yes, thank you very much for, for the question, an interesting 
question. We, yeah, the, 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 we believe so. There's um, a lot of rumors on, on the press that uh, these companies, the, some of these companies, are, uh, are willing to, to, to sell the, the operations. We have Intermarche, that's it's a, a very un unprofitable business. They have a bit of margins of 3%. There's, there's a lot of, of rumors that it could, could be sold. They, they can, can, could sell the, the Portuguese operation. And then we have uh, Ocean, the, the, the French group. They are very strong retailers in, in France, but they are struggling in, in Portugal. So there's also speculation in the, in the press that they, they could sell the, the operation. For, just to see how, how OSHA is, is, is suffering in, in Portugal. In 2014, they opened the biggest supermarket, the, the biggest hypermarket in, in, in Portugal. They increased their selling area by 25%, and that year their, their, their sales went down. So they're suffering a, a lot. Then we have we have Dia is losing market share, but Dia continues to to enjoy an, an, a very wealthy uh, EBITDA margin of an eight percent. And then we have we have Lidl. They don't report the, the Portuguese figures, but from the conversations we we have with Sonai and Jeronim, they tell us that they estimate they earn a three to four percent EBITDA margin in Portugal. It's not, it's, it's not a very profitable business. They are investing a lot, refurbishing their, their stores because they are, the, the little model, as you know, it's a hard discount model. And the, the shopping experience of little in, in Portugal was awful two years ago. The, the supermarkets, the typical uh, retail chain, they have the, the, all the products still in, in boxes, directly in, in the shelves. It's not like if you want go to a, a Sonai or, or a Jerome Martin supermarkets are very the, the, the shopping experience. It, it's it's very good. They are investing a lot in, in the in, in the in the stores, and I invite you to see the, the difference in these stores because they are they are they are fabulous. And that's another uh, that I forgot to, to mention in terms of Mercadona. Mercadona is more close to to Lidl. Is more a hard discount model. We have the the products the, in, in boxes directly to the to the shelf, and that's not the way that Sonai and Jerome Martins, the strong leaders, uh, operate in Portugal. Thank you very much for the amazing presentation and for the very interesting idea. You have explained brilliantly the dynamics in the in the model of continent in the food retail. Um, market share dynamics and the leadership of Sonai and of Geronimo Martins. I'm wondering whether you can give us a bit of flavor on the comparison in terms of profitability between Sonai and Geronimo Martins and whether they uh, translate in better, uh, better numbers. And you also give us some numbers in terms of EBITDA margin profitability. I don't know whether you can give us a flavor of how that translates into return on invested capital. In the Portuguese in the Portuguese market, the the, 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 the margins were pretty much the the, the same. The, they have Gerani Martins. It's a five and a half EBITDA margin against the 5.7 percent of the Sonai. MC return on invested capital has Geronimo, Geronimo Martins uh, uh, presents its results because they have a, a fuel distribution business. So the return on investment in, in Portugal it's it's very low. They don't disclose it. Uh, uh, the, the capital employed on either, each of the businesses they have they disclose it in 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 in, por in Poland, but not in, in Portugal because it's distorted by this fact that they have a huge uh, a, they have more than 20 percent of their sales is this fuel distribution that uh, Sonai doesn't have. Sonai, in, in terms of the uh, Sonai MC, they don't disclose the, the, the uh, EBITDA margins. Uh, they don't disclose the return on invested capital for for the MC for each of the divisions. They, exp they disclose it for, for the Sonai, for Sonai holding uh, as, as a group. It's 8%, and they continue to, to divest these real estate assets to increase this return on investment capital that they, f they found that the market was not Paying a premium to to have the, to hold these assets that consume a lot of capital, so they are, they, are, they pretend to become a asset light asset light cap, uh, company. So they are divesting these these assets and re recycling in, in new businesses. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Theo.